couple of days ago, I was like half dead in the morning doing nothing, like just laying on the sofa, sleeping. And here I am today and I almost feel normal, which kind of scares me a little bit. So I'm just waiting for that slap in the face when my cancer is just like, Hey! Remember me? Hello guys and welcome to a new video. Finally, still bald, but I put something on my head today to make it look a bit more fabulous. I think it looks more like I just have a towel on my head, but at least I give it a shot and this is what I ended up with, so yeah. So today I'm going to do something very simple, but still not simple, but very simple. Because I said from the beginning when I got diagnosed with this fabulous sickness that I was gonna take you guys along with me on the ride and see where we ended up. So this is the first video where I will actually explain something a little bit more in detail, I guess. So if you didn't know why I've been away for a couple of weeks this time, it's because I was doing my first week of chemotherapy and it ended actually exactly one week ago. So I have been home from chemotherapy for a week, building my body back together, <laughs> trying to collect as much energy as possible and not pass out, I guess. So now that I have my energy a little bit more back together and I'm not laying dead on the sofa or in my bed or something like this, I was thinking maybe it would be nice to make a video for you guys to explain how my first chemotherapy was. I don't know if that's a good idea, but I was thinking I can try to explain what goes on, what do you do, like how does it feel, because it's very strange. So basically what I will do is I will explain to you guys what happened when I was in the hospital. Not too much details, but basically what you do. And now I really want to pinpoint that this is my personal experience because there are so many different ways of treating cancer of different kinds, so nothing is like the other. You cannot expect anyone else to have experienced the same thing I have because everyone who goes through this kind of process goes through different things. So it's very individual and this is just my personal experience. This is what happened to me, this is how I reacted, so I'm just gonna tell you guys the story of my first chemotherapy. How amazing. And just a fair warning, I am a very open person. I am very open with a lot of things, so if you think something is like TMI, I'm sorry for you, you're just gonna have to deal with it, because I'm gonna tell you guys stuff. And I'm just gonna be completely honest with you guys, because I have nothing to hide and there's no point in trying to sugarcoat it. So just before we start to go into everything, I just want to explain to you guys that the type of chemotherapy that I'm going through means that I will spend one week in the hospital and I will constantly get medication 24-7 and then I go home for two weeks and then I go back again. So right now I have been home for one week. I So basically I spent six days in the hospital. So we're gonna just start actually with day one at the hospital because on day one I had some other things that I had to do before the actual chemotherapy started. So the first thing I did when I arrived at the hospital was that I had to put this in my arm and I will actually show it to you guys. It looks like this. I don't very beautiful. This is called a pick line, which is basically a tube that goes into my arm, as you can see here, and it goes all the way through onto a specific blood vessel that is located quite close to my heart. And the reason they had to put this inside of me is because the medication needs to enter my body from somewhere, you know? Well, because you know you have the drop with the liquid and it goes into this tube here and into my body. And the reason they cannot just put a needle in the arm is because the blood veins that you have in your arm are way too fragile for that type of medication. Like the medication is way too strong for your weak ass blood veins that you have here. They are not enough. They will break or they will be hurt in some way. So they have to put it into a specific blood vessel. Otherwise, it ain't gonna work. So they just had to put that in my arm. And just to answer some quick questions, no, I cannot feel it. No, it doesn't hurt. And I can do everything. It doesn't bother me. The only thing that bothers me is this thing that's just like hanging there, flopping around. That's why I have this uh, sock on top of it so that I don't have to deal with the the top. Anyways, let's move on from that. So I put this weird thing tube in my arm and then I went to my room and my room was actually quite nice. I even had like my own balcony, my own bathroom. I had like a very, very nice room. I mean, cred. To the hospital, thank you. And then I had to wait there for a few hours and I was speaking to my doctors and stuff and they explained all the wonderful side effects that you might get from this amazing treatment. And you're like, <laughs> can't wait. And then after lunch, I had to do a specific type of X-ray. It's called a PET scan, P-E-T scan. And it's a specific type of X-ray. And they just basically just scan your entire body and they just look for cancer cells, basically. Because they know I have a tumor located just above my right hip and by doing this scan they can 
check that I don't have any cancer cells anywhere else in my body because if I had that, bitch would have a big problem. And so I did it. It took a while, but I did it and they didn't find anything else, which was very nice, no. So I only have one tumor, which is <laughs> more than enough, thank you. And then I was finally ready to actually start with the chemotherapy. I think it was around 7.30 in the evening. Yeah, that's where the whole party actually started. I was actually excited once you actually start, it's like, uh, thank God, finally we're starting this whole process because you know it's gonna be shit, you know it's gonna take a long time so once you actually arrive at the hospital you're just like please just give me the goddamn medicine even if it's gonna make me feel bad I just like let's get started let's get through it and then I can go home so yes I started my first bag at 7 30 in the evening and each bag that I had lasted for six hours so every six hours I had to call for the nurse and the nurse would come with a new bag and replace it and they had to do that 24 7 and each bag is 1.2 liters so you can do the math yourself 25 liters of medication like that is a lot of liquid I'm just I'm just gonna leave it there like I think that the one thing that people actually are like curious about is how do you react once the medication hits your body like what is the first reaction for the first 24 hours of chemotherapy the only things that I really experienced was I was feeling a bit nauseous I was feeling a bit tired you feel like you don't really have as much energy as you used to and you, you feel like your body has kind of just like no. And actually I cannot explain the first 24 hours any more than that because I, I don't even remember so much about it. But when day two arrived, I was definitely going through a much harder time. And I remember I was getting headaches. If you've ever had a migraine, that type of headache is very hard and it makes you kind of dead. But it's very nice to be in a hospital when these kind of things happen because they have medication there that they give you. For example, I was feeling nauseous and at first they were giving me a pill, but the pills didn't really help so much because I was feeling nauseous all the time. And so they gave me this very weird blue liquid. I have no idea what it is. I mean, they told me, but I mean, I, I am very new to the lingo. I had no idea what they were talking about. They were just like, this is good. This is gonna make you feel less nauseous. And I was just there like, yeah, please just give it to me. And honestly, that blue liquid that I got, it saved my days. I got the blue liquid three times a day, every eight hours. I really don't know what it was, but it was good. Then I also got other pills for headaches. You get, you get all sorts of pills. I mean, I was just there on the bed and they were just bringing me stuff and you just take it. It's very good. And then during day three, if we move on to day three, I remember that's when my stomach really started to become a problem because I don't know if this is too much information for you guys, you're just gonna have to handle it, but I didn't poop for three days. And that's not a good thing if you're a human being. So uh, yeah, I started having a really big problem with my stomach because you know, if you don't poop, pain, not good, you need to do something about it because the body needs to work, everything that comes in needs to go out, that's how it works. So that's when they started giving me extra medication for my, well, let's say stomach because they had actually given me medication to kind of, you know, get the process going, but it didn't work. So on day three, my nurse told me, she said, oh yeah, I doubled it now. So she doubled the medication that I had before and that's when, um, adult diapers happen. That's not the type of experience that you think you're gonna go through as an adult. I don't I don't think I've ever felt so extremely unsexy when I was sitting on the hospital bed wearing an adult diaper and a hospital shirt. But at least my stomach was feeling a little bit better afterwards. I was actually grateful for that. So uh, thank you. I can wear a diaper in the hospital if it means that my body is working. So yeah. And then during day four and five in the hospital, everything was just, um, it was not getting worse, but it was not getting better. It was just like surviving on a pretty low standard level, honestly. You don't do much. Like if I were to explain one day in the hospital, there's not much going on. Like the biggest thing happening was me walking to the balcony, sitting outside, speaking to some of the other patients and then go back to my bed because that's literally all you have the energy to do because you are quite tired when you go through this shit. This whole experience experience changes you in a heartbeat. But yeah, that was my first chemotherapy experience. Not much more to say about it than that. It's like uh, your body's energy and your body's capability of doing stuff goes down at a pace of 200. Like you get the medications, 24 hours later you are like an old lady who can't move. There were several points where I was just unable to move. And it's not pretty when you're in that situation. And I'm just gonna say straight out that that was horrible. 
And uh, yeah, that was a very sad thing to like wrap this video up with, but at times you feel like that. But one thing with chemotherapy that can be a bad thing, but I like to look at it as a good thing instead, is that your mood can go like this, up and down, like a fucking roller coaster. It can be one hour that you feel like you literally want to die, and then the next hour you're up and running, you're walking around in the hospital, you are speaking to people, you have energy, your eyes are open, you're there like, <laughs> yeah! And then two hours later you're on your bed and you're just unable to do anything. So what I learned <laughs> from my first chemotherapy experience is that you will never learn how it is to go through chemotherapy because it is weird, it is strange, and it's hard, I'm not gonna lie, it's hard. But one day at a time. That's how you go through it. And uh, one thing that I really, really learned is to listen to my body. Because if your body tells you that today you are not leaving the bed, trust me, it's better if you just don't leave the bed. Just have a nap. Because you cannot push it. Because your body is down. So yeah, that's great. Anyways, that was pretty much it for this video. I feel like I've been trying to describe basically what happened, what I experienced, and uh, I'm gonna go back soon, actually, in one week. But until then, I'm just gonna enjoy the time that I have here at home. I will try to make videos as often as possible, but I cannot do it very often because of this whole shit that's going on, obviously. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you are interested in uh, another one of these videos after I finish my second round of chemotherapy, or if there is something specific that you would like to know about this treatment or about this whole experience, leave me a comment down below. You can ask me anything. I'm literally an open book. I could speak about literally anything when it comes to this. Let me know. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I have missed you guys so much and I love you. Bye. <laughs> I get... Got to me on a whole other level. <laughs> I mean poop.